here's the content that, that you can think about it. Maybe, like I said before, you try to personalize it, make it relevant to to the reader. The personalization is like using name, using the exclusive uh, offer, or maybe something that to tailor for the reader. And then the relevant, this one, send them with something that they would need in their life, not something that they they. They won't feel related at all. In that sense, of course, they they won't even read about it, or it won't be effective. Of course, if you send them an email that ramble rambled about your brand, about your proud of this and that, but you don't make it relevant to their personal uh, personal side, that will be off, and people may not really be interested in reading that. Okay, and of course, the email should get some values to the receiver or reader. They should get something for that from that entertainment, amusement, discount, voucher, whatsoever. But at least they get something from reading your message. But you may play with the ego of the reader that that, that can be that can be done as well, like. Um, the best leader in the world are all in this blah blah blah. Whatsoever you can, you can, you can come up with some complimentation and some positive, uh, positive side of of them or something that they might proud of and feel like that their ego and and you're trying to make them go consistency with that statement. Okay. You may also use the six principles below, which are the principles for like psychology of marketing. The sense of urgency. This one is like okay, do it now. One campaign that I like, like uh, it said, order now to let your mom get. Uh, this gift within uh, before uh, on the Mother Days things like that. You see, if you if you don't order now, it might be late to give the gift to your mom. So you should do it now, so the shipping can be done right in time. Things like that. It, so it makes make them feel like okay, I I should do it now. It, it would be great to do now, or. Uh, do it well, or buy it while stock last, or low in stock. Things like this, they they feel like oh, you, they should act now rather than later. Or scarcity. This one is quite quite uh, close to the sense of urgency as well. But you make it feel like it hard to find or very limited supply. Do it, uh, having it or don't have it at all. Things like that. And the next one, fear missing out. This one also kind of close to the previous two as well, but it more like you playing with the train, the consensus. They most of people doing this. If they don't want to miss it, they should join this. And that it's it's not it's by nature of, of people that they want to be a part of the herd. They want to be a part of society. So when you try to point out that if they do this, if they don't do that, they won't be a part of the group. That can they can trigger the fear of missing out or some marketing term will say formal. That's it. You can use this trigger as well. And the uh, and the next one, social proof, which I. Which I mentioned before, like many people believe in this, tons of people uh, use this. That can be a part of her behavior as well. And the next one, loss aversion, make them feel like if they don't do this, they will be at loss of something. This, there was an experiment. That uh, a researcher like use a mug 
uh, to give out to 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 the attendee, the at the attendees of that experiment. Uh, like uh, some of them will get a mark, and some of them uh, will not get anything at all, or will get any uh, will get nothing at the beginning. They can choose either they they want to get the mark during the experiment or not. While another group who will receive the mark in the first place can can say whether they want to keep the mark with themselves or they want to just leave the mark. The result is that actually people who get nothing in the beginning, just only half of them that will get the mark. But the another group, 86% of those that receive the mark in the first place, they don't want to lose it. They don't give up the mark that they receive in the first place. And why is that? Because they 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 they, they don't want to lose what they've got. So that that kind of like loss that they feel. So you can also use this trick as loss aversion for your marketing campaign as well. And the next one, the reciprocity. Uh, this one is like. Give first before you get back. It's like give and take. Learn to give first, and then and then people will feel like they owe you. They would like to repay you with something. So many many research platform use this trick. Like they give you some free report or some free uh, presentation, free stuff. And you feel like okay, at least I, I I give them my email, or at least I give them my information, or at least uh, maybe I I may try to blah 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 do do things in return for their favor, giving out this. And you can see most of this actually based on Cialdini's principle. He is a, a psychologist, social psychologist. Is he is teaching about psychology, and you can find a research of him, and also books that he write as well. And then number four, get your readers to take action. Of course, this one you really need to do it within your email because you send it out as marketing email to call for action to call your reader to do something. You may send out an update and ask them to listen, to check out your update, or you may try to ask them to buy something. But keep it simple and keep it one at a time. Don't try to put in too many buttons, too many call to action in one email. Make the always make the the call to action clear to the reader to the receiver. You can see here this one is for. Listening to updates, they want to take the survey. This one to shop. They make it clear one action at a time. Okay. Number five, get your mail finalized. This one, uh, it's just finalization of your mail. You of course you you should do proofread, which I may fail to do this. A little bit on this presentation because I saw some some misspelling here. But anyway, don't repeat my mistake. Okay, just do what you know what is right. Okay, and here another thing that you can do also you can check the spam indicator. One is is not spam. This one you can send the whole email that you prepared. To send to your customer, to your receiver, to this one, this email that I mentioned here, and they will return you an email that whether you are your email is considered as a spam or not, based on criteria of those providers, email providers, of a service provider criteria. You can use. It's not spam, mail tester, and other thing, but two of them are free, so that's why I, I mentioned it here. Okay. And the last one, 
get to have fun with your creativity. Okay, this one is pretty simple as it sounds. You should try new things, in try different things with your receiver with your customer. Like let's say actually one one campaign that is a result of this kind of experiment we we call A B testing. Uh, the campaign of uh, President Barack Obama in 2012. Here, so uh, do the campaign that do this A/B testing with the subject line. They change just the subject line and see the the content inside are similar, identical, and just see that how. Uh, people will donate differently based on the subject only, and that make a lot of different. It can raise really different amount of money based on just subject line. You can check that out. You can just Google the the case of the experimentation online anywhere. Okay, so have fun with it. Maybe change the color, change the font size. Both font, or maybe、uh, use different image. You can try and you can have fun with it. Then you will be surprised how the result can be different based on just this exper- small di-、uh, experimentation. So here we go. Now that's the end of my presentation, and I hope you have a great time. With that, so for now, it's a Q and A session. If you have any question, please feel free to ask. But if you are not really into the mood of asking now, you can reach me via my email or my LinkedIn as well. Okay, thank you. Anyone would like to ask? All right, dear participant, do you have any questions for Miss JJ? Okay, it seems like my presentation is crystal clear. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, JJ, we got questions、uh, from participants via email. So,、okay. uh, so there's one: how to blast and get email data. Oh, you mean to build to build a list of subscriber, right? For that one, actually,、uh, I would say I don't recommend you to buy any list online. It's very risky because sometimes some email provider may may just may may just post. Some fake email to to get you trapped that you buy this email list, so you are marked as spam. You are backlist, backlisted. So I, I recommend you to get the email by maybe from this kind of webinar, organize some event, or maybe organize some campaign and let people subscribe to that. And also, when you send out transaction email, you can if if you have one. You can also ask your receiver to join a subscription list, or you can give out some rewards for those who subscribe with discount code or、uh, some freebies, etc., etc. This will be organic way of of getting those list. All right, thank you. So there's a question from our chat box from Edwin. How do we do A or B testing with emails? What are the traction markers or metrics we should track? Unlike social media, where we can track engagement, how's that? Okay,、uh, to to do A B testing with emails, actually, like like I said, it, it's pretty simple. If you, especially if you use、uh, those marketing email platform,、uh, like let's say Mailolite, Mailchimp. Uh, you can you can you can check the engagement, maybe、uh, open rates, click through rates,、uh, or conversion from the emails as well. This can be the metrics that that you that you use to measure whether A works or B works. Okay, is that is that good enough? Is it clear for you, Edwin? <laughs> All right. So、uh, okay. Hi, Edwin. <laughs> so there's another questions、uh, from participants. Do the layout of email important? Yes, of course. It's so important. One thing that that you need to 
keep in mind is that nowadays, forty uh, percent of email are open on mobile. So you should do mobile optimization. Make sure that it's mobile first. The layout should support on this mobile device. So it's so important if you cannot display it right on the device that that the user use for it. And also, you should decide clean and also nowadays more like minimal, be minimalist. And because nowadays people consume tons of tons, loads of loads of information every day, and they get like more than some of them may get more than hundred marketing mails in their inbox per day. So you should make sure that. They don't feel overloaded and don't want to take a look at this too complex uh, design email at all. So it should be well designed with hierarchy, proper hierarchy, and the use of uh, size, use of colors, etc. Yeah. Okay. The last one. Uh, what would you recommend as an alternative to using fonts in images, or just using the standard fonts offered? Uh, I would say standard fonts that offered will be good if you if you go with the HTML mail. I mean, if you don't embed the text uh, on the photo, you should you better use those standard fonts that can go across platform, across uh, different brands of phones or tablets, etc. But for those that use the poster image, it's fine. You can use any font that you want, but make sure it easy to read. Don't come up with the font that have like hook. Uh, what is the name of that font? Let let me let me think about it. Uh, I cannot remember the the, the font name, but but there's one that with the hook. Uh, at on the on the letter, and that will be very toxic to to the to the eyes. When you read it for so long, it uh, will hurt your eyes. And I don't recommend that. Go with the the one without hook. Okay. Okay, we got another another question from the chat box. Sure. From so sure. from so. Do you want to recommend any marketing automation tool to generate email marketing? Definitely. Uh, for marketing automation too, actually, you can. Nowadays, they are all available on the marketing uh, email marketing pro- provider. Those platform they are all available for this for this stuff. You should use that because. When you send out the automation tool with the triggered action from from customer, there will be more possibility, higher possibility for the receiver to open your mails and go through your email because they know that they have just acted something on your website, on your blog, or whatsoever. So they get this email, so there are more opportunity for them to. To uh, open that mail, and I, I really highly recommend you to try to use those automation tool. You can find it easily on on any marketing uh, marketing mail service provider. Mailite or uh, Mailchimp also have that. Okay. All right. So all right. So I say thank you. Welcome. Welcome. So guys, You're welcome. Uh, Thank you so much. You got any questions? No. Uh, okay. If you got any question, you can uh, go uh, get email JJ if you have related uh, questions. Ah. Yeah. Uh, later. I, I I think I should okay, screen again, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Sure. Yeah. If you have any question, just feel free. To reach out to me, okay. Okay. Yeah, thank you for having me as well. And don't worry about the slide; the presentation will be shared with you guys as well. Thank All you right. so much. Thank you, Bethany. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Bye, bye.
Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, JJ. All right, last one, last one. Uh, I need. Uh, I want to ask you guys. Can you open up your webcam? You're gonna take a sc screenshot. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh. <laughs> hey, cheese. Are we good? <laughs> hey, cheese. All right. Thank you, JJ. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. See you again. See you. Bye-bye.